Hello everyone, uh, I'm Nicola Rassami Malana. I'm a director of R&D at ANSYS and I'm super happy today to present to you CIMAI uh, and generative AI and deep learning to democratize simulation. So CIMAI is part of the um, ANSYS um, AI product lineup um, and which goal is to transform simulation at the speed of AI. So this presentation, this session, is really focusing on CIMAI. ANSYS CIMAI is a cloud-enabled, physics-neutral platform that empowers users across industries to greatly accelerate innovation and reduce time to market. It is based on our proprietary deep learning algorithms that encapsulate physics priors and that stand at the forefront of AI state-of-the-art. With ANSYS CIMAI, users are able to reliably predict the performance of complex problems in mere minutes instead of hours or days. The solution encourages more design testing, faster progress, and ultimately more innovation. So how does it work? I'm going to show you here an example on external aero on a car. So the first thing is, um, uh, based on data, you have some simulation results, past simulation results uh, that you can upload on the platform. Second, based on these results, you train a new AI model. Uh, and once the model is ready, you then in a third stage, able to uh, run some prediction of a new design here of a car. And you can predict the full simulation um, output, what the output would be um, in a, mere seconds in a fast, reliable way. So two highlights here. The first one is CMAI does not need parameterization of the geometry. And ha that has two consequences. The first one is you can leverage sim simulation results, past and future, to train the AI model with unparameterized design or with um, by mixing different parameterization all together into one single AI model. And the second consequence is that um, CIMAI can predict performances across design changes, even when the geometry is inconsistent. So that globally, that means um, it's more simple uh, of usage. Now, the second highlight is that CIMAI is physics neutral. So CIMAI can deal with any physics, fluids, structure, electromag, optics, um, and that applies to all industry segments, aerospace, automotive, semiconductor. And last point is that um, CIMAI works with simulation results, uh, 3D simulation results coming from various solvers, and that includes ANSYS, but also others. We've packaged CIMAI um, with two accesses to the same platform. So the first one is a web application with a super simple user experience, click and, and run um, uh, for anyone to use. And the second one is a SDK called PySimAI that is very powerful, embeddable, and scriptable into complex workflows. And the goal here with uh, these two accesses uh, for ANSYS is to offer uh, our users a very simple solution where there's no need for deep learning knowledge and where the user can uh, only um, benefits from AI. So here an example of a typical workflow with CIMAI. So on the left, um, you recognize the simulation um, workflow where you uh, run your simulations that then uh, constitute some data for the CIMAI training to be performed. In the middle, um, once you have some uh, one model that is prepared, but or also past models um, in, a, in the catalog of trained AI models, this is where the users are able to explore um, the design space with interactive design and also with optimization. And on the uh, right-hand part, uh, once the users have um, selected the best designs, uh, they are able to validate with a full fidelity simulation using, for instance, um, ANSYS solvers um, to have the best informed design uh, uh, and the best informed simulation. 
Now, this, uh, there's a feedback loop, very interesting feedback loop, that these simulations, full fidelity, full fidelity simulations, can then be uh, put again into um, the first stage to um, expand the capabilities of uh, one AI model. So it's a very virtuous circle. In terms of personas, um, so the, the people who are responsible for creating the models, the AI models, uploading the data are the simulation experts. Um, that is the simulation analysts, method engineers. Um, they are the ones who are in charge of creating these models, making sure that they perform at the highest level. And this all thanks to the SimAI platform that is, uh, again, uh, very easy for them to use. And then on the other hand, um, on the prediction side, it's the same personas, uh, the simulation experts, but also uh, SimAI uh, targets the broader audience with uh, project manager, designers, um, chief architects. Uh, in, a, in short, anyone who uh, needs simulation uh in a democratization effort so this is exactly what we implemented at the renault group uh, and for renault uh, sima is a, is a strategic solution that we define their uh, digital engineering workflow to explore more possibilities in the upstream phase of projects and ultimately reduce their um, overall time to market and this uh, testimonial sums up very well the value that uh, we bring to our customers. So here are a couple of bullet points for you to uh, use SimAI for your use case. First thing is um, we support all physics, um, thermics, fluids, um, aerodynamics, uh, structures, um, electromag, optics, and the list is growing. Second, um, what the sweet spot to create a new AI model is to have between 30 and 100 simulation results. Um, and each of them requires surface and optionally volume data, if you're interested in the, into the volume. Um, we've had uh, use cases that can work with less simulation as an input, and that really depends on the complexity that you want to achieve. Um, third point, uh, the training data set uh, needs to be uploaded to the cloud. Uh, this is a SaaS solution um, and that's a requirement here. Uh, following point, um, in terms of format, CMAI uh, has a, a, a four, a fourth point in terms of format, uh, CMAI uses VTP and VTU. These are very standard and open format. And here we can help you um, in any format conversion. Um, there are some formulas available in the platform to compute global coefficients. And these are um, super useful to uh, assess the performance or to have directly some post-processing embedded in the platform. And the last two points um, are about the use cases. So we support a steady simulation uh, data uh, but also uh, transient simulation uh, in some uh, cases. And we would be super happy to um, discuss with you uh, if your um, use case is applicable here. A point about security. Um, this is super key. Um, so a couple of bullet points here. Uh, the CMI platform is hosted on uh, ANSYS AWS account. And then we, we are very at the forefront of any security. Um, so the data is encrypted at rest using AES-256. All the internal services are secured using uh, VPN and also Bastion. Um, so really the highest standard of security. Um, in terms of customer tenants, they're all separated uh, in uh, both a tenant-based and a user-based ownership. And the last point, also very important, uh, there is no mutualization of data between customers. And that means um, any AI model that uh, you will create will be based on your data and your data only. So here is a snapshot of different applications that uh, you can perform with CIMAI. Um, so on fluids, um, we have use cases uh, for CFD comparison, 
thermal management, cooling design, on structure, um, use cases ranging from genetic design to stress deformation, but also including uh, crystal plasticity, uh, very various, uh, varied use cases. In the Electromag, um, coupled with, for instance, HFSS or Maxwell, um, use cases on antenna design, PCB um, uh, forces and losses, magnet placement, uh, and op optics with illumination. So here the list is growing. Um, please uh, reach out to us if you want to um, know if we can uh, address your use case. So I'm going to show you um, a quick demo of the CMI platform. Um, so this is um, a screenshot of the um, web app access that I'm going to describe. So the first thing is I'm going to show you um, the prediction side. So here on the platform, I select an AI model, this is bracket. Um, then I choose on my laptop um, a new design I want to test. So this is the STL file that I drag and drop onto the platform. It's uploading and then it's available for um, prediction. Here I simply click on run, uh, the prediction is running. So there's a queuing, a short queuing, and then, a, and then it goes into prediction. This is the prediction. And here it's in real time, the prediction is ready. Uh, and then I'm able to compute some post-processing, the volume I can download, I can uh, generate some slices. I can also visualize uh, the surface directly within the platform. So this is the results of CMAI. Uh, the result of the prediction that we just carried out. So really here, um, the same output and the same post-processing that you can have with a traditional simulation. Now, how do I come up to here? Um, I'm going to show you how to build an AI model from scratch. So here I'm creating a new project called Bracket. Um, I have a couple of simulations on my, on my um, laptop. So I have five here. Uh, click uh, drag and drop uh, on the platform uh, and once they're uploaded and ready to use I can create a new AI model. So here is the very simple model configuration uh, where the first stage here is to select the variables. So these variables are the ones that were included into the simulation um, that I uploaded. I can select them all or just a selection like here. Second stage is uh, to define a bounding box around the geometries to focus on this um, area. And then third one is about um, build duration. The shortest uh, build will um, yield to a coarser uh, prediction and the longest build up to five days will lead to uh, refined predictions. And that's it. Um, as you have uh, noticed, there is no need for any deep learning knowledge. It's very um, simple. The only knowledge that is required here is knowledge of the data. So this is the end of my presentation. Um, um, please reach out to us if you want to know more about CMAI or if you want to benefit from our trial program. We'll be super happy to help you here. And also more info on um, our AI product lineup uh, can be found at this address, ansys.ai. Thank you very much for your attention and um, have a nice day. The Indy 500 is a thrilling spectacle that features some of the fastest machines to ever cross the bricks. Each year, it's all about making the cars smaller, lighter and faster, which takes months of advanced planning, design, engineering and of course, simulation. For us, it's really trying to use simulation to try to understand all these different variables, but also control the variables too, which simulation does very well. Any performance advantage in drag, aerodynamic downforce, any cooling advantages, even things like, is the driver comfortable in all those scenarios can make a difference. Join me as we take a peek behind the scenes to find out what enables these champions of speed to compete for glory year after year. So our mission is to just win, and we're responsible for all racing that Honda does in North America. We do a ton of simulations. It's basically like we're putting the car on track without being on track, actually. I'm Isabel Walsh, 
And this is Driven by Simulation. For more than a century, mobility has been the beating heart of human progress, connecting us across vast distances, expanding our reach and shaping our daily lives. But today, we stand at a crossroads like never before. With advancements in electrification and sustainable practices, the industry is undergoing a profound transformation, unlocking the future of mobility and driving us towards a world of limitless possibilities. When talking about future mobility, it's really important to be more sustainable, to be more efficient, to reduce energy consumption of vehicles. We literally have six million variants. And how do you validate it? You can't go about testing the six million variants on the roads or, or on our tracks. It's very difficult. We are able to bring this common component together to a very complex system. And it is a fully integrated, efficient, summed up solution. The key enabler for us to do modularity is to have good simulation tools. It's a fact, our cars are getting smarter. But with more people and more technology filling our roadways, how do we not only adapt quickly, but also safely? I'll give you one guess. I'm Miss Emma Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. Right now, every company we work with expects to see simulation data. With virtual prototyping, you can totally save cost and time because you're using virtual prototype to replicate a real scenario. So it allows you to be able to model accurately where light's going, how it interacts with different surfaces and, and different materials, and where it'll end. It's always better to have more simulations. We can just um, change the values and get back the results within seconds. So this helps us a lot, especially in the development phase. A digital twin is so important for us. So it's future. From the track, to Main Street, to the motorway, we've seen how simulation is preparing us for the road ahead and helping us reach the future of mobility faster than we could have ever imagined. But what about the places where there are no roads? Well, prepare to get a little mud on your boots, because today we're miles from the comforts of the design lab to see how simulation is taking us off the beaten path. There is no driver here. And more than 90% of the accidents are caused by human error. This can be prevented if we really let the car drive itself. And this is where simulation comes in critically. How do you build a champion? In this era of Formula One, it takes a balance of skill and science, adrenaline and engineering, a passion for disruption from the design lab to the pit lane, and the drive to not only be faster, but more innovative than the competition. Today we find ourselves an hour's drive north of London at the home of one motorsport team whose mission is to win and to do it differently. Join me as we kick off this journey with a peek behind the curtain at one of F1's hottest and most competitive teams. To explore how engineering simulation is helping to unlock a competitive edge and push the boundaries of what's possible both on and off track. I'm Miss Emma Walsh and this is Driven by Simulation. Ah!